Hello, this is Mr. Willem. Today we're going to talk about sections uh, 3.1 and 7.1, talking about congruent figures and sums of angles in a triangle. Uh, talking about uh, goals for today included angles inside a and sides in a triangle, and accurately identifying what corresponding parts of figures. Uh, in order to have uh, the, cor uh, the congruent, uh, it means that all of the size and the shape meaning that it has all of the corresponding parts are congruent in order for the polygons. And a lot of what we're going to talk about in this chapter is specifically triangles, but that all the pairs of the corresponding parts are going to be congruent in the polygons. We've briefly talked about the reflexive property already, and it's going to come into play more in, in this chapter. We've talked about how any segment or angle is congruent to itself. And if we go back to... Uh, the other um, side here, we're talking about all pairs of congruent, all pairs of corresponding parts are congruent. In uh, this diagram here, we have one pair of corresponding sides marked congruent. We have a second pair of corresponding sides marked congruent. But we don't have a third side, and when we start talking about the triangles, we'll say that WN is congruent to WN, and that would be our third pair of corresponding sides. When we talk about uh, triangles being congruent, they're listed in the appropriate order to talk about the corresponding. So in this case, an angle R and A are corresponding, so they are congruent. And then I have an S and B are corresponding. We also have angle T and angle C are corresponding. That's also true when we talk about the segments. So R and S and A and B are congruent. S, T, and A, B are congruent. I'm sorry, B, C. And then the first and the third letters would also be congruent. And we don't always have to draw a diagram, but we can just look at the letters listed to talk about the corresponding parts. So Angle C would be congruent to angle T. Angle R would be congruent to angle A. Go ahead and take a second to uh, finish listing the corresponding parts. So those would be the congruent statements that we can make based off of the uh, information uh, looking at the corresponding parts. Now, when we have to list our own congruent statements, it has to be the same thing. We have to list corresponding parts, and we have to look at the letter. So we can really start in with any letter that we want. Um, for example, in number 7, I'm going to start with uh, angle A. So I'm going to say angle A, triangle ABC is congruent. Now, my second triangle, the congruent statement, has to follow so that the corresponding parts. So A is corresponding to D. And then my B in the diagram is corresponding to E and then F. So those angles would be in cor the, uh, the congruent corresponding parts would be in corresponding locations. In number eight, the only angle that we don't have that's marked congruent would be angle C because of vertical angles. But now we can make up a congruent statement. Again, the first triangle really doesn't matter the order in which you choose. We choose CBA for uh, the first triangle, then C is corresponding to C in the other triangle, and then D, E, based off of the marks of the diagram. Another thing we're going to talk about uh, today is talking about the measures of angles in a triangle. And those are all probably familiar that all the measures of angles in a triangle are up to 180 degrees. And now we can solve for the, in number 9, we can solve for the value of x. We have two separate triangles. We first need to look at uh, this triangle right here and find the missing piece. So we'll call that one y for now. Add up all the angles and set it equal to 180. When I solve for y, I get a value of 80. And then by vertical angles, I can say that this angle is also 80 then have a separate triangle that I have all my angles add up to 180. 
and solve for x, you get an x value of 50. Now number 10, uh, picture's a little uh, fuzzy on your sheet. We, uh, when we're talking about angle x, we're actually talking about uh, this blue angle right here. So then the 80 and the 50 is a part of this triangle. The x value is a part of this little triangle, and we really need to look at the other triangles in here first. So if we look at the red triangle, we are missing just this angle down here, and if we add 80 and 50 to the missing value, is that equal to 180? We find that the missing value here is 50 degrees. We can then look at the other triangle, find this corner piece, and when we add up 90 and 65 and the missing angle in that triangle, we find out that that missing angle is 25. And now we can go back to the triangle that we need x in. And we have angles of 50, 25, and x. So we can solve for x get 105 degrees. Something that's directly related to the measures of the angles in a triangle is talking about the exterior angle theorem. And the exterior angle theorem states that the measure of an exterior angle you know, of a triangle. So the exterior angle of a triangle, we have a triangle right here. The exterior angle of the triangle is out here. That angle is equal to the sum of the measures of the two remote interior angles. We have remote interior angles here. We add up those two angles, and it equals the exterior angle of the triangle. So in example 11 here, we have the exterior angle of 6x minus 7. We could set it equal to the sum of the two remote interior angles. And then we could solve for x. Then uh, another concept we're talking about here is the midline theorem. The midline theorem states that a segment joining the midpoints. Um, of the of two sides of the triangle. So in this case, we have CE connecting the midpoints, as stated here, and then as also parallel to the third side. If that is true, then it's equal to one half of that third side. So then, if we are given that DF is twenty and CE must be half of that, we can say that CE is ten. We can also go in the other direction. If we are given CE is 4, then we can say twice that, we can get that DF equals 8. Another concept talking about reflecting over the x-axis or the y-axis. So we're still going to list the points for max after it's reflected over the x-axis and the y-axis. Call the points reflected over the x axis. M prime, A prime, and X prime. So if we are reflecting over the x axis, we are going to move this entire triangle, flip it over the horizontal x axis. Because of the points M and X, they are already on the x axis, they are going to stay the same. And then because A is at a height of 3. When we flip it down, it's going to be at height of negative 3, which gives us our new triangle reflected over which gives us our new triangle reflected over the x-axis. We then reflect it over the y-axis. So if we're looking at m, it's going to go from negative 3 over to positive 3. And then a is going to go from over from 2 
to negative 2. And x is going to go from 5 to negative 5. Giving us our new triangle. Here are six problems that are going over the exterior angle theorem and the sum of the angles in a triangle adding up to 180. If you could finish those six problems and come to class with those tomorrow. And that concludes sections 3.1 and 7.1.